Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson nine, comparing integers and other rational numbers. Remember, an integer is positive and negative numbers on the number line that are not decimals and fractions. And then it says, and other rational numbers, which means integers are rational. Rational means it can be written as a ratio. A ratio is a fraction, so ratio fraction. So six is an integer because it's positive or negative and it's not a decimal, but I can write it as a ratio, six point one. So integers are rational. Okay, so here we go. Interpreting number line models to compare numbers. Exercise one. Actually, this is example. Okay, so here we were to create a real-world situation that relates to the numbers graph of the number line. Include an explanation of what zero represents in your story. Students should contribute suggestions to help the story evolve and come to a final state. Students write the related story in their student materials. So you're given this. Try to come up with a story that includes the number negative 10, number 5, and tell me what zero represents in your story. Okay, answers will vary on this, so here is an example of what you may have done. Uh, this is just an example. Every August, the Boy Scouts go on an eight-day, 40-mile hike. At the halfway point, 20 miles into the hike, there is a check-in station for Scouts to check in and register. Thomas and Evan are Scouts in two different hiking groups. This is a really detailed story. By Wednesday morning, Evan's group has 10 miles to go before it reaches the check-in station, so they're at negative 10 miles. And Thomas's group is 5 miles beyond the station, so they got to the station and continued 5 miles further. Okay, so there's the graph. One group is at negative 10 miles, 5 is 5 at miles beyond, so 0 in this case is the check-in station itself. Okay? Now exercise one. Create a real-world situation that relates to the points shown on the number line model. Be sure to describe the relationship between the values of the two points and how it relates to the order of the number line and what does zero mean here. So this is a vertical number line, so I would always consider thinking about temperature or elevation or something like that when we're doing a vertical number line. So we'll try to come up with a story for that. Okay, so here's an example. Alvin lives in Canada and is recording the outside temperatures each night before he goes to bed. On Monday night, he recorded a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. On Tuesday night, he recorded a temperature of negative 1 degree Celsius. Tuesday night's temperature was colder than Monday night's temperature. Negative 1 is less than 0. So the associated point is below 0 on a vertical number line. Okay? Okay, so for the, each problem here, determine if you agree or disagree with the representation, then defend your stance by citing specific details in your writing. Two, Felicia needs to write a story problem that relates to the order in which the numbers negative six and a half and negative ten are represented on a number line. She writes the following. During a recent football game, our team lost yards on two consecutive downs. We lost six and a half yards on the first down. During the second down, our quarterback was sacked for an additional negative 10 yards or an additional 10 yard loss. On the number line, I represented the situation by first locating negative six and a half. I located the point by moving six and a half units to the left of zero. Then I graphed the second point by moving 10 units to the left of zero. Do you agree or disagree? Okay, here we go. Okay, it's agreed. Negative 10 is less than negative 6.5 since negative 10 is to the left of negative 6.5 on the number line. Since both numbers are negative, they indicate the team lost yards on both football plays, but they lost more yards on the second. Okay, number 3. Manuel looks at a number line diagram and has the point negative 3 fourths and negative 1 half graphed. He writes the following related story. I borrowed 50 cents from my friend Lester. That's negative 1 half. I borrowed 75 cents from my friend Calvin. That's negative three quarters of a dollar. I owe Lester less than my own count. Do you agree or disagree? Okay. 
this is a green. Negative 3 quarters equals negative 0.75, and negative 1 half is equivalent to negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 and negative 0.75 are both sold by the old money, but negative 50 cents is further to the right on the number line, so Manuel does not owe Lester as much as he owes Cal. Okay, so that's another upgrade. Number four, Henry located two and a quarter and 2.1 on a number line. He wrote the following related story. In gym class, both Jerry and I ran for 20 minutes. Jerry ran two and a quarter miles, and I ran 2.1 miles. I ran for a farther distance. Is that true or no? Okay, hopefully you disagreed with that statement. Two and one fourth is greater than 2.1. Since two and a quarter equals 2.25 on the number line, the point associated with 2.25 is to the right of 2.1. So Jerry ran a further distance. Okay, number five. Sam looked at two points that were graphed on a vertical number line. He saw the points negative 2 and 1.5. He wrote the following description. This time I'm going to show you on a number line what that would be. So, it's a vertical number line. He saw the points. Here's 0. Here's negative 1. Here's negative 2. So here would be negative 1.5. So he saw the points negative 2 and 1, 1 1.5, 2, okay? So he saw the points negative 2, negative 2, and 1.5. Here's the following description. I'm looking at a vertical number line that shows the location of two specific points. So far, so good. The first point is a negative number, so it's below zero. True. The second point is a positive number, so it's above zero. True. The negative number is negative two. The positive number is one half unit more than the negative number. Mm. Is that true? Here we go. Sam was right when he said the negative number is below zero and the positive is above. But 1.5 is one and a half units above zero, and negative two is two units below zero. So, altogether, that means the possible number is, the positive number is three and one half units more than the negative two. Okay, so it's not real accurate to understand. Number six, Claire draws a vertical number line diagram and graphs two points, negative ten and ten. So, let's do that. So, here is a vertical number line with negative ten here and ten here. She writes the following related story. These two locations represent different elevations. One location is 10 feet above sea level. So let's say the sea level is here. And one location is 10 feet below sea level. On a number line, 10 feet above sea level is represented by graphing a point at 10. And 10 feet below sea level is represented by graphing a point at negative 10. Okay, so this one's a agree. Zero in this case represents the sea level. Right, so we can draw a zero there. Both locations are 10 feet from zero, but in opposite directions, so they are graphed on the number line at 10 and negative 10. That is true. Okay? All right, next question. Mrs. Kimball, sixth grade math teacher, asked the class to describe the relationship between two points on the number line, 7.45 and 7.5, and create a real-world scenario. Jackson writes the following story. Okay, so the first thing I would do is draw a number line. Okay, and let's make this 7.5 and this 7.45. Then way down here, it's not to scale, but zero would be over here. Okay, so 7.45 is less than 7.50. Okay, and let's see what this guy says. So Jackson says two friends, Jackie and Jenny, each bought money, brought money to the fair. Jackie brought more than Jenny. Jackie brought 7.45 and Jenny brought 7.50. Okay, for starters in the story, I would not choose two names that start with J because I can't label this J and label that J and decide for the difference. So when you're writing stories, please use a different letter than the other person. Okay. How about Jenny with a G? Or, yeah, Jenny with a 
G, G E N N I E or genie. Okay, that make more sense. So they're saying Jenny brought seven fifty. So there's Jenny. So let's just call Jackie A. Let me erase all this. Okay. Whoever wrote this should have done a better job choosing names. Jackie is A. Jenny is B. Jackie brought 745. Jenny brought 750. B. Since 745 has more digits than 7.5, it would come after 7. Five on the number line or to the right, so it is a greater value. Mm. Okay, so here's the explanation. This I disagree. Jackson is wrong by saying that 745 is 7.45 is to the right of 7.50 on the number line. 7.5 is the same as 7.50, and it is greater than 7.45. When I count by hundreds, starting at 7.45, I'd say 7.46, 7.48, 7.49. And then 7.50. So 7.50 is greater than 7. Associated point it falls to the right of the point associated with 7.55 on the number. Okay? Next. Eight. Justin graphs the points associated with the following half numbers on a vertical number line. Negative one and a quarter, negative one and a half, and one. She then writes the following real-world scenario. The nurse measured the height of three sixth-grade students and compared their heights to the height of a typical sixth grader. Two of the students' heights are below the typical height, and one is above the typical height. The point whose coordinate is one represents a student who has a height that is one inch above. Given this information, just determine that the student represented by the point associated with negative one and a quarter is the shortest of the students. Agree or disagree? Okay, I disagree. Justin was wrong when she said the point negative one and a quarter represents the shortest of the three students. If zero stands for no change from the typical height, then the point associated with negative one and a half is further below zero than the points associated with negative one and a quarter. The greater value is positive one. Positive one represents the tallest person. The shortest person is represented by negative one and a half. Not negative one and a quarter. As Justin said. Okay, that's the end of lesson nine.